traceable rotter, duct hunter. We've got a downspout here that runs up the hill, uh, and that's where we're going to test it. It's a plastic pipe, non-conductive. The duct hunter will become the conductive path for tracing. We've also got a sonde attached to the end, so we'll demonstrate that as well. Now that the duct hunter is inserted into the pipe, we'll connect the transmitter. Take the red lead from your transmitter, clip it on the end terminal of the duct hunter. Take your black lead to the ground spike, and put it 90 degrees away from where your anticipated path is going to be. The further out and away you can put your ground spike, the better your locate will be. Now we'll set our frequency of our transmitter. Turn it on. We're going to select 82 kilohertz. Usually the higher frequencies work a little bit better with the duct hunter just due to the way it, uh, it grounds internally. We'll select, press the F button until we see 82K. We're ready to locate. So Jameson offers two different model receivers. This one is the high-end receiver with more features. This is a more basic receiver with just a couple features. If all you want to do is find an 82 kilohertz signal or a 512 hertz sound signal with no depth indication, then this is the receiver you'd want to use. Very simple. Um, they both work the same way, just, this just has fewer features. We're going to work with this one today just to show you what all it can do. This receiver has depth indication, has a backlit display, it has a volume mute feature, um, and it has a multitude of frequencies. It has two passive frequencies, one is 60 hertz, one is RF in general, radio frequency in general. You would use these two frequencies before you hooked up your transmitter to see what other active utilities might be in the area. This would be power or data that has its own live signal. Once you've searched for those signals and you found that there's nothing in your area, you can be assured it'll be a more successful locate. Once you apply your signal, you have several to choose from. You have 8 kilohertz, 33 kilohertz, 82 kilohertz, and 512 hertz. Today we're going to be using 82 kilohertz as we find it works the best with the duct hunter. So you would select your 82 on your transmitter and select your 82 on your receiver. So we're ready to locate. We turn it on and we press the F key. It cycles through the frequencies. We're going to select 82 kilohertz. We'll bump our power all the way up. So now when we select our, trans our frequency on the receiver, we want to select 82 kilohertz as well. You can tell by all the noise it's making that they're matched and they're sensing each other. But if we were to switch frequencies, you can see there's no noise, there's no beeping, they're not matching each other. There we go. So I'm just going to walk up the hill here. I know where the path is, but you'll be able to see how the readout reacts as we go over the traceable path.
Okay, so we've traced to this path. We know about where it goes, but our signal's getting a little unreliable in this area. So this is where we figure the end of the rotter must be. It's the nature of tracing. You, you lose a little reliability at the very tip of the rod. And that's where the sonde comes in handy. The sonde will enable you to pinpoint the exact tip of the rod. We have a sonde attached to the duct hunter. So what we'll do is we'll just switch over to the sonde frequency, which is 512 hertz for the Jameson sonde. And we'll try to pick up the sonde by itself. So the method is the same. We're looking for the, the loudest signal. We're following the arrows. The only difference when finding a sonde is you want the blade of the receiver to be parallel with the sonde orientation. In your line tracing, you want it 90 degrees, but with a sonde, you want it parallel. So in a parallel position, we're finding the loudest signal. Is about here. We figure the sonde is right underneath the blade. We can verify that by turning the blade 90 degrees and it goes quiet. You can do the same for line tracing but it's the opposite. Remember for the sonde you want the blade parallel to the sonde location. Line tracing you want it 90 degrees. Always remember to read, follow, and understand all of your instructions and safety precautions when using your locators. You can find more information at jamisonllc.com. If you have any trouble whatsoever, please give us a call and we'll be glad to help you. Thanks.